Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, now uh, uh, we are going to start today's lecture on uh, how to differentiate between uh, constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy. As you know, this is a, a important topic frequently, uh, uh, frequently in uh, asked and uh, in written exam also uh, in uh, MD final part exam. Uh, how we differentiate between constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy. Uh, in my exam, uh, uh, this question also, uh, <clears throat> this question uh, came to in my exam also and frequently asked by uh, our teachers. So uh, this is important. Uh, this is on aspect uh, for uh, examination purpose, uh, exa examination or uh, for uh, um, facing the MD third part uh, exam. Another uh, perspective is that uh, uh, frequently uh, we may encounter a right heart failure patient of unknown etiology. Uh, so if we could differentiate it uh, if, or if we could diagnose the constrictive pericarditis or restrictive cardiomyopathy, uh, this will be helpful uh, uh, for the patient. Uh, helpful for the patient in terms of uh, that uh, a constrictive pericarditis uh, is a curable disease. It is fully curable disease. Uh, uh, so if we can diagnose it, so patient will be uh, cured. Uh, rather, restrictive cardiomyopathy is, is less curable, uh, but constrictive pericarditis is curable disease. Both of these is presented in the same way, uh, like a, a right heart failure patient, patient having uh, effort intolerance, breathlessness, patient having uh, leg soiling, abdominal soiling, raised JVP, uh, uh, like a features of right heart failure, both the patients presented. And, uh, and there is a diastolic dysfunction also. So if we can make a diagnosis of constrictive pericarditis, or if we can um, differentiate between constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy, this will be uh, very much helpful for the patient, as I uh, told that constrictive pericarditis is a curable disease. So constrictive, uh, chronic constrictive pericarditis is completely reversible cause for right-sided heart failure and recurs differentiation from restrictive cardiomyopathy. <coughs> Both of entities come under differential diagnosis of restrictive physiology which impairs the filling of the ventricular cavity during diastole. Both of disease, both constrictive pericarditis as well as restrictive cardiomyopathy. This uh, impairs the filling of the ventricular cavity during diastole. There is a um, pathophysiology, a pathophysiological similarity between restriction and constriction as abnormally elevated ventricular pressure impaired the filling of left ventricle to normal endastolic volume. So there is a, a endastolic volume will uh, increase and so diastolic filling is imp imp impaired in both of this situation, this, uh, both of this constriction restriction. The restriction is due to myocardial disorder, restrictive cardiomyopathy, the name itself uh, denotes that it is a disease of the myocardium and constrictive pericarditis, the name itself denotes that constrict, uh, it, it is the disease of the pericardium. So, the as I mentioned, the clinical features is almost like same, the features of right heart failure, raised JVP, edema, ascites, endless tender liver, and patient uh, presented with deep uh, breathlessness, effort intolerance, but we can differentiate it by uh, uh, doing investigation like echocardiography. Sometimes echocardiography is sufficient to diagnose, but uh, sometimes uh, could not be. So in those situations where echocardiography is not enough or echocardiography is not conclusive, then we can took help of cardiac catheterization. We can see the pressure pressures of different chambers. We can see see some uh, different uh, features uh, by uh, cardiac catheterization, and we can diagnose whether the patient is constrictive pericarditis or restrictive cardiomyopathy. 
So other than echo and cardiac catheterization, pericardial thickness on CT MRI. CT and MRI have a very, uh, not a very um, a big role in diagnosis of the constrictive pericarditis or respiratory cardiomyopathy. Uh, rather, uh, if we see the uh, pericardial thickness more than five millimeter in CT or MRI, uh, this will be helpful for diagnosis of constrictive pericarditis. But other aspects, CT and MRI, and not a very big role in diagnosis of these diseases. Constrictive pericarditis. Constrictive pericarditis is typically chronic and can occur after any pericardial disease process, like uh, it could be post tubercular, post tubercular pericardial effusion, or it could be a, a cancer patient, a cancer patient may develop constrictive pericarditis or radiation, or any source of cardiac surgery that may complicate it to constrictive pericarditis. So as a result, uh, as a result uh, of loss of the normal elasticity of the pericardium, patients with constrictive pericarditis exhibit these two things, uh, and, um, dear fellows, uh, please, um, uh, I want to focus or I would like to mention where, um, uh, on these two points. These two points uh, is uh, mostly responsible for all the features uh, those I will discuss in uh, in uh, our next part. All the features are depend on these two uh, phenomenon. Uh, one is exaggerated interventricular dependence. Both of the left and right ventricle depends itself in, diff in different part of the cardiac cycle. This is normal. But if it is exaggerated, then some features, then some hemodynamic uh, features appeared. Uh, uh, due to the exaggerated interventricular dependence. So this is on on uh, my on major uh, phenomenon uh, that is uh, on which most of the findings are dependent on this um, exaggerated interventricular dependence. And another is dissociation between intrathoracic and intracardiac pressure during respiration. So uh, during respiratory variation, and the um, intrathoracic pressure, intracardiac pressure is associated or in normal physiological condition, intrathoracic pressure, intracardiac pressure uh, usually communicate or usually correlated. But in constrictive pericarditis, there is a dissociation between intracardiac and intrathoracic pressure. So these two things uh, we have to remember all through this uh, way we diagnosing, way, we, way to diagnose constrictive pericarditis or a way to differentiate constrictive pericarditis from restrictive cardiomyopathy, all the way of diagnosis, we have to find out or we have to search somehow some some of the features of these two phenomenon is uh, one is exaggerated interventricular dependence and another is dissociation between intracardiac and intrathoracic pressures during respiratory variation. So we have to keep in mind these two principles while we discuss the latter things. So as I mentioned earlier, etiology of constrictive pericarditis include tuberculosis, post-cardiac surgery, any cardiac surgery can complicate to constrictive pericarditis, malignancy, radiotherapy, and it also the idiopathic cause. Restrictive cardiomyopathy. Restrictive cardiomyopathy is a disease of the myocardium. Restrictive cardiomyopathy is a disease with various causes that affects Myocardial function, either by primary myocyte dysfunction, it could be primary myocyte dysfunction, or by extracellular infiltration of the or fibrosis, like amyloidosis, some storage disease. So th this could be uh, restrictive cardiomyopathy could be uh, by dysfunction of the myocyte itself, or some extracellular infiltration or fibrosis. This is restrictive cardiomyopathy. Both conditions, uh, constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy, lead to diastolic heart failure with abnormal ventricular filling and similar clinical features. As I telling repeatedly that this both of these both of these disease, diseases presented with diastolic heart failure, the diastolic dysfunction, and features of uh, same clinical features like right heart failure or diastolic heart failure. So here is the importance lies to differentiate between the two diseases. 
constrictive pericardial is potentially curable disease. So, if we um, we can find out or we can diagnose a patient of constrictive pericarditis, that will be beneficial for the patient. That we can we can send the patient to surgery, and then pericardiotomy done, and then patient will be fully cured. The accurate differentiation of constrictive pericarditis from restrictive cardiomyopathy can be diagnostic challenge even to the ex but. Uh, even in experienced clinician, this is a diagnostic challenge, but is of paramount importance since constrictive pericarditis is a potentially curable disease. While in restrictive cardiomyopathy, prognosis is poor due to limited therapeutic options. So, what are the clinical features? As I mentioned earlier, unexplained right heart failure, elevated jugular venous pressure, prominent oil descent in the JVP and uh, disproportionate ascites. It is an important feature that uh, ascites is more uh, prominent, pronounced than uh, dependent edema. This is called disproportionate ascites. Features of right heart failure. So what are the echocardiographic criteria to differentiate between uh, constrictive pericarditis from restrictive cardiomyopathy? So echocardiographic criteria, uh, I will show you step by step. Uh, first the 2D and M mode, then color Doppler, uh, then we'll go for cardiac catheterization. So what are the echocardiography features? First, respiration-related ventricular shift, septal bounce. This is the septal bounce. Ventricular, as we know, if there is a right heart, uh, right heart volume overload, the septum is a D shaped. Uh, the septum is D shaped. And other features also there is a, the features of right sided volume overload. But in constrictive pericarditis, there is a uh, in, in inspiration and expiration, the septum is shifted and again um, come back to its normal position. This is the respiration related ventricular shift or septal bounce. We'll discuss this uh, later. But it is the uh, as in constrictive pericarditis, the heart is a shell like like a shell bone, so it could not accommodate blood uh, uh, as it as necessary. So uh, the uh, right ventricular freehold is bounded by the shell, just free, uh, just uh, movable all is the septum. So when during inspiration, right heart, uh, in right heart blood um, came in the right heart to accommodate the blood as the uh, right freehold of the right ventricle could not, uh, could not, expand due to shell uh, shell of constrictive pericarditis or pericarditis. so uh, to compensate this septum bounces or septum shifted to the uh, septum shifted to the left side left ventricle and again in expression it comes back to the normal position so this is a shift and come back this is called septal bounce so the, uh, the so this is an uh, very important findings of uh, uh, constrictive pericarditis this is a septal bounce and another important uh, another important features of echocardiography is respiratory variation in mitral inflow velocity and also tricuspid inflow velocity. So we will first in echocardiography we will uh, search for septal bounce or not, and then we will search for and if there is a respiratory variation in mitral inflow velocity. If we put a mitral um, pulse wave Doppler or continuous wave Doppler in mitral valve we'll see some wave, E wave, A wave. And if we if we look very carefully, the length of the E wave or velocity of the E wave, uh, it, it varies in uh, resp during inspiration and expiration. Uh, this is the um, pathognomic features of constrictive pericard. Usually normal uh, population, the varies uh, is not significant as in constrictive pericarditis. So if we put a continuous wave Doppler in mitral valve, then we will see that uh, mitral E velocity varies in uh, respiration and in, in inspiration and expiration. So this is an important uh, feature so we will see in, right, uh, in echocardiography. And another is the marked hepatic vein diastolic flow reversal with expiration. We will see it later. So this is uh, the, there is a uh, differentiation and initiating the constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy. As I mentioned earlier, disease of the pericardium, this is complicated by 
acute pericarditis, cardiac surgery, radiation therapy, systemic disease involving pericardium like tuberculosis. And this is the disease of the myocardium, may multiple myeloma, amyloidosis, or cardiac transplant patient may complicate to restrictive cardiomyopathy. Both of them are the diastolic dysfunction and presented with the system of uh, symptoms of CCF. Both of them have the same clinical features like diastolic dysfunction, congestive cardiac failure. So this is the picture, uh, pic pictorial difference, difference between constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy. In constrictive pericarditis, you see the pericardium is thickened, pericardium is thickened, uh, more than five millimeter, it is best, uh, di best diagnosed or best seen in uh, CT. And uh, pericardium is carrying us there and loss of elasticity of the pericardium. But in restrictive cardiomyopathy, the myocardium is stiff. Myocardium is stiff, rigid, muscle all, and lack of efficient blood flow. So uh, uh, here in uh, constitutive pericarditis, the right ventricle or uh, heart is uh, encapsulated or uh, in, uh, encapsulated by a shell-like structure. So it could not uh, expand like normal heart. And uh, in restrictive cardiomyopathy, it is also uh, um, bound, bounded by rigid stiff myocardium. So it could not uh, expand or it could not accommodate as in normal heart. So uh, there is a um, constrictive pericarditis, impaired ventricular filling. This is important, uh, dear fellows. Um, in next part, I will discuss some uh, special features, uh, all the features are uh, correlated with this uh, phenomenon like this. Impaired ventricular filling in mid and late diastole. Shuruti diastole, shuruti ekta boro dhoner filling hobe, jethu pressure gradient ikto thakbe, kintu shuruti hoye diastolic filling ta mid and late diastole jigye impaired hoye jabe. Potom halt hoye jabe, tarpor mid diastole ke diastolic filling ta halt hobe. Potom ek kintu filling ikto hobe. Eje je early filling and Mid and late diastole uh, impaired filling. E features star upori one one evidence echo and cardiac catheterization power. So then it amader monrakto be je constrictive pericarditis the first rapid filling and diastolic filling phase a first rapid filling. Then in mid and late diastole there is a impaired filling. So why there is impaired filling? Uh, because the impaired filling is the ventricular filling occurs rapidly in early diastole. The ventricular volume does not increase after end of the early filling. Early filling, however, pore our ventricle ta, um, ta increase korte pare na. Ijo no late, mid and late filling uh, ta impaired in constrictive pericarditis. But restrictive cardiomyopathy eh, dhone features pao jana. Uh, amra dekbo je raise duita thei JVP raise jabe. Ekhane prominent eh, oil descent. It ek important feature samra aiglo chobi te dekbo pore borti the. Our clinical examination on the Jodi Kori, the Leki of apex bit is not palpable. A can apex bit a palpable hovena or pericardial knock pojabe. A can a pericardial knock poj, pericardial knock taki jinish Jodi when uh, there is uh, early after early diastolic filling, the, the filling is seized or filling is stopped. In, the, in that uh, scenario or in that sequence, the, the pericardial knock presented when the um, filling is stopped, then in mid and late diastole, filling uh, gets uh, going slowly. So when uh, after early diastole filling, filling is uh, stopped, then pericardial knock produced. Uh, here no pericardial knock, but third and fourth sound may present. And ECG, uh, non-specific changes there might be in ECG. Uh, reduced voltage, non-specific T wave abnormality, left atrial abnormality may be present. And um, there may be, as there is a myocardial disease, so there may be there may, might be bundle branch block, uh, actually a ventricular block may be present. And chest X-ray, in chest X-ray, uh, when there is a, a calcification might be seen in the uh, case chest X-ray, but not all cases, uh, only 20 to 30 percent cases, uh, we can see the pericardial calcification. Uh, when there is a severe um, constrictive pericarditis, and in, uh, there is a, uh, no calcification in restrictive cardiomyopathy. As I was told, that severe pericardial calcification is found only 20 to 30 percent of patients of constrictive pericarditis. So, X-ray is not sufficient uh, to tell or to 
uh, include or exclude the diagnosis because only 20 to 30 percent patients of severe pericardial calcification uh, the uh, calcification is seen uh, in chest x -ray. so only the chest x -ray could not um, make a, a summary of diagnosis of constrictive pericarditis so this is a x-ray showing that uh, there is a pericardial calcification and this is a pericardial calcification and now echo so as i mentioned earlier the echo findings is uh, mainly by uh, two things dissociation between intrathoracic and intracardiac pressure um, and exaggerated ventricular interdependence these two features most of the findings we will see uh, in constrictive pericardies but in restrictive cardiomyopathy there is no uh, such type of dissociation between in intrathoracic and intracardiac pressure uh, and there is no in exaggerated ventricular interdependence um, only increase all thickness of the left ventricle uh, cavity is small stiff ventricle so this is a very important slide dear fellows, um, fellows please look very carefully the uh, first two things as uh, uh, first things uh, uh, we'll see the in echocardiography uh, constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy differentiation we will first the, uh, see the septal bounds is presented or not uh, number one thing and second thing we will see the mitral inflow uh, velocity uh, in uh, different inspiration and expiration phase uh, and these two things we will uh, look very much carefully then we will go for uh, doppler uh, doppler findings like pulses paradoxes pulses uh, uh, pulse, uh, 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 then we see the um, paradoxes and uh, uh, inverses phenomenon so in first if we look for the septal bounds we see that in uh, as we know during uh, inspiration uh, in inspiration intrathoracic pressure uh, intrathoracic pressure become ne negative but uh, in constrictive pericarditis this uh, not communicated with the uh, interior of the heart so um, the uh, in uh, inspiration and during inspiration uh, as pulmonary vein is outside the pericardium so uh, so uh, there is a less pressure difference between uh, uh, heart uh, heart and by the pressure difference to come hoy sudarang ekhane dekha dei je pulmonary vein diye kom blood asche dikhe ar ekhane dekha je right side e beshi blood asche sudarang during inspiration e ekhane jehetu left atrium e kom blood asbe shetu ekhane je mitral velocity mitral flow jeta mitral velocity e value e value kom hobe then expiration thik expiration ulta ta hoy expiration e dekha jay je during expiration in constrictive pericarditis during expiration e dekha jay je ekhane blood beshi asche sutara ekhane mitral valve diye blood jokhon jabe value e velocity beshi asbe normally kintu jodi constrictive pericarditis na thake jodi intrathoracic and intracardiac pressure dissociation na thake তাহলে কিন্তু বোথ ফেজে সমান ব্লেড সমান এই ফেজে ইনস্পিরেশন এ রাইট অ্যাট্রিয়ামে যে ব্লাড ব্লাড আসবে রাইট অ্যাট্রিয়া ট্রাইকোস্পিড ভালভ দিয়ে যে ব্লাড ভেলোসিটিতে যাবে এ সেম এক্সপিরেশনও সেম যাবে কিন্তু যেহেতু ইন্ট্রাকার্ডিয়াক এন্ড ইন্ট্রাথোরাসিক প্রেসার ডিসোসিয়েশন ইন কনস্ট্রাকটিভ পেরিগারিস সো ডিউরিং এক্সপিরেশন লেফট হার্টে লেফট অ্যাট্রিয়ামে ব্লাড কম আসবে কারণ পালমোনারি ভেইন গুলো এক্সট্রা পেরিকার্ডিয়াল কমিউনিকেট করে না ফলে এখানে প্রেসার গেডিয়ামটা কম থাকে ডিউরিং ইন্সপিরেশন প্রেসার গেডিয়ামটা কম থাকার কারণে পালমোনারি ভেইন দিয়ে কম ব্লাড আসে এই জন্য যেহেতু ডিউরিং ইন্সপিরেশন লেফট সাইডে পালমোনারি ভেইন দিয়ে কম ব্লাড আসবে এই জন্য লেফট এট্রিয়াম দিয়ে যখন আলোচনা করব যে ডিউরিং এখানে যখন ইন্সপিরেশনে রাইট হার্টে ব্লাড বেশি আসবে এই ব্লাডটা যেহেতু এখানে কনস্ট্রিকটিভ পেরিকারের জন্য এ 
এক্সপ্যান্ড হতে পারছে না আরবি ফ্রি অলটা সুতরাং সেপ্টাম এদিকে চলে যাবে সরে যাবে অ্যাকোমেট করার জন্য আবার এক্সপ্রেশনে যখন লেফট সাইডে ব্লাড বেশি আসবে তখন সে এখানে চলে আসবে এই র্যাপিড যে সেপ্টামের শিপটা টুয়ার্ডস দ্য এল ভি অ্যান্ড দেন ইন এক্সপ্রেশন টুয়ার্ডস দ্য আর ভি দিস ইজ সেপ্টাল বাউন্স ইফ উই ক্যান সি ইন আদার ফিচার্স ইন এসপেশালি ইন রাইট ভেন্টিকুলার প্রেশার ওভারলোড দেন দ্য সেপ্টাম উইল বি ডিশেপেড অর টুয়ার্ডস দ্য এল ভি বাট হিয়ার ডিউরিং রেসপিরেটরি ফেজ সেপ্টাল উইল শিফট টুয়ার্ডস এল ভি অ্যান্ড দেন টুয়ার্ডস দ্য আর ভি দিস ইজ সেপ্টাল বাউন্স সো two important point we will um, uh, discussing here on is the um, these two important point is the hallmark of the constrictive pericarditis number one is septal bounce during respiration respiratory phases and during different respiratory phases there is a uh, uh, mitral inflow velocity or e velocity differentiation as uh, in uh, expiration left uh, left in Uh, mitral inflow velocity e value is increased is increased um, but in uh, inspiration it is decreased so it is more than 25% or 30% if there is a increment is more than 25% or 30% in respi respiration then we can diagnose that this is a case of uh, constrictive pericarditis and another is hepatic vein reversal you see in inspiration Uh, the blood mainly blood come to the uh, right atrium uh, so if we uh, but in expiration uh, the pressure gradient less rather the pressure pressure gradient is less in the um, hepatic vein or inferior vena cava so blood may come uh, blood may reverse to the hepatic vein during expiration so uh, in constrictive pericarditis during a expiration if um, hep hepatic vein blood go to the hepatic vein there is called hepatic vein reversal this is a pathognomonic of constrictive pericarditis normally normally uh, it should not go to the um, hepatic vein in any of the cardiac uh, respiratory cycle so in constrictive pericarditis 2d if we look for the 2d and m mode we can see the thickened pericardium also though um, transesophageal echocardiography is more superior uh, than transthoracic echocardiography Uh, we can see the um, we can measure the pericardium if the pericardium is more than 4 mm then uh, we can uh, have an idea that the pericardium might be thickened and it could be a case of constrictive pericarditis if the patient presented with the features of right heart failure and also in 2d m more constrictive pericarditis septal bounce present and flattening of, uh, of the lv posterior all during diastole and in 2d and m mode how do you can see in the restricted cardiomyopathy there may be a left ventricular hypertrophy alteration of the appearance of the myocardial that is called speckling so this is a this is a normal heart picture echocardiography this is a thickened pericardium you see the here is the pericardium and this is the thickened pericardium and this thick pericardium if more than 4 or 5 mm then it is a or thickened pericardium and maybe diagnosis of constrictive pericarditis so uh, in restrictive cardiomyopathy uh, features like this the biatrial enlargement so, so when he, when in, uh, doing an echocardiography especially a, a congestive heart failure patient if we see the biatrial enlargement it most likely uh, goes in favor of restrictive cardiomyopathy biatrial enlargement goes in favor of restrictive cardiomyopathy as i have mentioned earlier the respiratory variation of e velocity mitral valve inflow so if we put a cursor in a mitral valve and uh, see the respiratory e velocity during different phases of the respiration if during expiration uh, the if during expiration the e velocity is more than 25% than the e inspiration e velocity then it is diagnostic of uh, constrictive pericarditis but in restrictive cardiomyopathy the e velocity is not uh, increased significantly in expiration than inspiration we will see the uh, trace and also uh, in uh, this is also the reciprocal intra tricuspid valve in tricuspid valve during expiration e uh, tricuspid valve e velocity will increase more than 25% than uh, expiration and uh, and respiratory variation of the pulmonary flow also uh, more than 80% so respiratory variation of the pulmonary flow 
increases more than 20% during expiration. So um, I put this uh, dotted line that if you can understand um, the, this uh, previously what I told, you can uh, answer this blank blank line. Uh, anybody can answer, uh, Dr. Maruf, uh, respiratory variation of inconstrictive pericarditis. Maruf, please unmute. Uh, uh, respiratory variation, respiratory variation in pulmonary venous flow. এটা বলছে যে রেসপি পালমোনারি ভেনাস ফ্লো 18% বেড়ে যাবে এটা কিসে পারবে ইনস্পিরেশন এন্ড এক্সপিরেশনে পালমোনারি ফ্লো леফট সাইড আমরা যদি এই ছবিটা দেখি তার নরমালি দেখি হ্যাঁ নরমালি হচ্ছে যে ডিং ইনস্পিরেশনে স্যার পালমোনারি ফ্লো হচ্ছে বারে আর সিস্টেমিক ফ্লো হচ্ছে স্যার কম থাকে স্যার এক্সপিরেশন আর ডিং এক্সপিরেশনে ভাইস ভার্সা হ্যাঁ তার মানে কনস্ট্রাকটিভ পেগারিসে এক্সপিরেশনে এসে चिंता करो तुम्हारा की देखी परवर्तीटुकुन हाईलिटी so um, and again constrictive pericardial is ea elevated that uh, uh, if we uh, ea elevated mane ekhane dekha jacche je ea elevated hobe dui khetre e by a ratio mane e ta beshi hobe eta choto hobe normally kono respiratory phase na je kono phase e ea ekhane je ea ratio chilo normally uh, ar constrictive pericardial is ea ratio uh, ea ratio barbe restriction o tai ekhane eta khub beshi difference na dutite e by a फिलिंग बंद हो जाए माइट्रलुलर E-prime velocity, E-prime velocity 8 cm per 
তাহলে আমরা ডায়াগনোস করতে পারবো কনস্ট্রিক্টিভ পেরিকারাইটিস এটা কিন্তু রেস্ট্রিকটিভ এটা লেস দ্যান 8 সেন্টিমিটার পার সেকেন্ড টিস্যু ডপলারে যেয়ে যায় তাহলে এটা এই আমি বিভিন্ন লিটারেচারে পড়ছি একটা জায়গায় ওরা বলছে যে তোমার যদি এরকম রাইট হ্যান্ড ফেইলারের ফিচারস নিয়ে আসে এবং তোমার যদি সন্দেহ তুমি একটা ছোট স্ক্রিনিং করেই তুমি বুঝতে পারবা যে এটা তোমার কনস্ট্রিক্টিভ না রেস্ট্রিকটিভ কি স্ক্রিনিং मेडिया এই ফিচারসটা দিয়েই আমরা একটা রাইটার ফেইলারের پیشنটের এই ফিচারসটা দিয়েই আমরা অনেক মানে অনেক ধারণা নিয়ে যেতে পারি যদি শুধু টিস্যু ডপলার দিব একটা যে কোনো অ্যানুলাসে মাইট্রাল ভাল মাইট্রাল ল্যাটারাল আর মেডিয়াল যে কোনো মাইট্রাল ভালভের যে কোনো অ্যানুলাসে আমরা টিস্যু ডপলার ইমেজিং করব টিস্যু ডপলার ইমেজিং করে যদি ই ই প্রাইম এটা তো ই প্রাইম আসে নিচের দিকে ই প্রাইম আসবে ই প্রাইম যদি 8 সেমি পার সেকেন্ডের বেশি হয় তাহলে আমরা বুঝব যে এটা কনস্ট্রিক্টিভ আর লেস দ্যান 8 সেমি পার সেকেন্ড হলে की फिलिंगी তখন কি করে ও লংগিচুরালি হার্ট এক্সাজারেটেড মুভমেন্ট হওয়ার চেষ্টা করে এই লংগিচুরালি হার্ট এক্সাজারেটেড মুভমেন্ট করতে গিয়ে আর এই যে মাইট্রাল ভালভের ই প্রাইমটা মাইট্রাল ভালভের মুভমেন্টার এক্সাজারেটেড হয় তখনই আমরা ই প্রাইমটা পাই টিস্যু ডপলার ইমেজিং যদি করি তখনই আমরা ই প্রাইমটা বেশি পাই যেটা 8 সেমি পার সেকেন্ড এর বেশি পাইলেই তখন আমরা মনে করি যেটা কনস্ট্রিক্ট কনস্ট্রিক্টিভ পেরিগারিটিস সো দিস ইজ এন ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট প্যাথোগনমিক ফিচারস অফ কনস্ট্রিক্টিভ পেরিগারিটিস Uh, that is, uh, if we put a mitral annular tissue Doppler velocity, a, a, if E prime comes more than eight centimeter per second, it is pathognomonic for constrictive pregnancy because um, it is the um, uh, it is uh, contributed by the longitudinal movement of the left ventricle for diastolic filling, and for this reason, there is exaggerated motion of the mitral annulus, and that produces uh, tissue Doppler E prime more than eight centimeter per second. So this is the tissue Doppler imaging of the um, mitral annular velocity. You see, this is the constrictive pericardius. You put a tissue Doppler in the mitral annulus, then E prime will come in like this phenomenon. Thus, this 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 phenomenon E prime will come, and uh, uh, so uh, so this is a uh, uh, um, if you see that this is a, a E prime uh, velocity is more. and uh, this is a restrictive e prime is less this is e prime is more and e prime is less this is a e prime this is a very less of four or five and this is more than uh, 10 or 20 this is another term as you have frequently heard this uh, term this annulus paradoxus and annulus reversus and hepatic vein flow reversal annulus paradoxus these all are present in the constrictive pericarditis but these are absent in the restrictive cardiomyopathy annulus paradoxus annulus reversus and hepatic vein flow reversal so what is the annulus paradoxus so annulus paradoxus this is a um, please mute mute uh, mute please this is very important uh, important term uh, frequently you have, you, will, uh, you have to you have heard and you have to to you know yourself that what is annulus paradoxus the, the annulus paradoxus the now name is uh, so annulus paradoxus the name itself is a paradox so what is the paradox here paradox related to the annulus 
So if we put a, uh, a tissue Doppler imaging, we will get a E prime of uh, uh, annulus, mitral valve annulus. So if we E, uh, if we normal uh, e put uh, co continuous wave Doppler, we will get E value, and uh, if we mm, do uh, tissue Doppler imaging, we will get the uh, E prime. So e, e by E prime e, e is the is the marker of a diastolic dysfunction. As we know, not mm, not in constrictive pericarditis, in a, every diastolic dysfunction. How will we calculate diastolic dysfunction? We will measure E by E prime. Uh, below eight e, e by e prime below eight on uh, eight to uh, nine to eleven it is normal more than nine to uh, eleven it is uh, abnormal but if e by e prime is more than uh, fourteen this is uh, most uh, most likely diagnosis of diastolic dysfunction so uh, uh, according to the result of the e by e prime diastolic dysfunction uh, presence presence of diastolic dysfunction or severity of the diastolic dysfunction related. So diastolic dysfunction is related to the E by E prime ratio. But paradox is in annulus, uh, paradox in constrictive pericarditis is that there is diastolic dysfunction, but this does this do not relate to the E by E prime ratio. This is the paradox because in constrictive pericarditis, E prime is increased. So um, though there is a diastolic dysfunction, grade four diastolic dysfunction, severe diastolic dysfunction, Severe diastolic dysfunction, heart failure, severe diastolic heart failure, but E by E prime is not increased because E prime is uh, E prime as E prime E prime jodi niche thake, shudhara E prime jodi bere jai, shudhara E by E prime to thale yar barbe na. Shudhara dekha sachche je amra normally diastolic dysfunction jeva diagnosis kori E by E prime jodi chhoto pono ro sholo hai amra bolle jara diastolic dysfunction come from jodi E prime E by E prime कारण কারণ ই তো ঠিক আছে কিন্তু ই প্রাইমটা তো তার বেড়ে যাচ্ছে ফলে ই বাই ই প্রাইম যখন রেশিও করব ই যেহেতু নিচে থাকে ই প্রাইম যদি বেড়ে যায় ই বাই ই প্রাইমের রেজাল্টটা বেশি আসবে না সো দিস ইজ দা প্যারাডক্স সো দিস ইজ কলড অ্যানুলাস প্যারাডক্স অ্যাজ দা রেশিও অফ দি देयर ইজ এন ইনভার্স রিলেশন নট দিস ইজ রাদার এন ইনভার্স রিলেশন বিটুইন দা রেশিও অফ আর্লি ট্রান্সমিটাল অ্যানুলার ভেলোসিটিস ই বাই দি পসিবল এক্সপ্লেনেশন ফর দিস mentioned earlier uh, the um, what is the mechanism of uh, increased e prime in constrictive pericarditis that is the mechanism of inverse relation of e prime uh, by e by e prime in constrictive pericarditis that is exaggerated longitudinal motion of the mitral annulus uh, despite high filling pressure so this is the paradox uh, annulus paradoxes so annulus paradoxes and e by e pressure should not Where LV filling pressure, so he, he, this is annulus paradoxus is an important phenomenon of constrictive pericarditis, and this is annulus reversus. This is very plain and simple. As we know that amra jani, je amra jodi tissue Doppler imaging kori, thale mitral valve duita annulus, lateral annulus, medial annulus. Then as a lateral annulus, E prime shops my beshi hai, then medial annulus theke. Kano lateral annulus ta beshi movement kore. So kano E tar E E prime. এগুলো কিন্তু আমরা টিস্যু ডপলার ইমেজিং এর কথা বলছি তাহলে ই প্রাইম ল্যাটার এনালাইসিস সব সময় বেশি হয় নরমালি বাট ইন কনস্ট্রাকটিভ পেরিকারিসে দেখা যায় কি যে যেহেতু ল্যাটারাল এনুলাসটা ল্যাটারাল এর সাথে সংযুক্ত থাকে অনেক সময় পেরিকারডিয়ামের সাথে এটা টেদারিং হয়ে এর মুভমেন্টটা কমে যায় সুতরাং ইন কনস্ট্রাকটিভ পেরিকারিটিস ই বাই এম ইন কনস্ট্রাকটিভ পেরিকারিটিস ই প্রাইম ইন ল্যাটারাল এনুলাস ইজ লেস দ্যান দা মিডিয়াল এনুলাস সো E prime is more in the medial annulus in constrictive pericarditis, but in normal heart, the E prime is more in the lateral annulus. But due to constrictive pericarditis, as there is a tethering of the lateral annulus due to pericardium uh, attached to the lateral um, uh, uh, annulus side, so there may be tethering and uh, issue Doppler uh, E prime velocity is reduced uh, than medial uh, annulus issue Doppler E prime. So this is an another. Uh, Uh, reverse phenomenon uh, reverse in terms of normally uh, lateral annulus uh, e prime beshi thake then medial annulus kintu uh, constitutive pericarditis medial annulus e prime beshi hoy eta hocche annulus reversal 
so annulus uh, paradoxes and annulus reverses are uh, very um, very typical and very important uh, findings of constrictive perigaritis there are some misleading finding uh, findings in some diseases if as we know uh, the constrictive perigaritis as well as restrictive cardiomyopathy both may develop atrial fibrillation but in atrial fibrillation these uh, these uh, identical features may not be present uh, because there is a uh, rr interval is irregular so uh, doppler findings may be misleading in atrial fibrillation with constrictive or restrictive uh, cardiomyopathy patients in patients with any irregular rhythm respirophysic changes may still be present but are easily confounded by varying rr interval so uh, the mainly uh, the, the respiratory phases uh, may mainly dependent on the cardiac cycle so if there is irregular rr interval that may interfere so the typical features we will not get so there is a um, difficult to interpret a, 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 the um, uh, color doppler tissue doppler findings in differentiating constrictive perigaritis and restrictive cardiomyopathy in atrial fibrillation patients so how will you uh, then how will you the atrial fibrillation patient the atrial fibrillation the very common thakte pare tai na jodi eta congestive cardiac failure sathe atrial fibrillation thak tale amra jodi tar inflow mitral inflow velocity diye differentiate na korte pari tale amra amader ki ki hate thakbe shegulo diye amra korte hobe jemon mitral flow velocity uh, variation is related more to cardiac cycle length than respiratory phase so it is not reliable in af jeta ami bolchi atrial fibrillation e देखते हेपाटिक वेन्स डायस्टलिक फ्लो रिवार्सल देखते देखते माइट्रेल एनुलर भेलोसिटी मेजार बै टीस्यू डब्ल जो माइट्रेल एनुलर भेलोसिटी इ प्राइम जो एट सेंटीमिटार पर सेकेंड बेसि है एक्टिव फिविलेशन भैरि करना एक्टिव फिविलेशन पेशेंट माइट्रेल एनुलर भेलोसिटी सरसरी मेजार करते हेपाटिक वेन डायस्टलिक फ्लो रिवार्सल देखते प्रेसर थे कम हर कम प्राइम टेदारिंगाइम कमे जाए tissue doppler imaging e eta constrictive perigaritis so sudharang eta ekta reverse phenomenon than normal so it is called annulus reverses and diagnostic features of constrictive perigaritis ebar amra ekhane ei chobi ta te ektu dekhi ei je amra chobi ta te dekhi je e velocity e a ei je eta hocche e eta a 
पाल्सिटीटे बेल डिफारेंस मन कर डिफिकल्ट चिंता कर धारणा पावा सीओपीडीम सीओपीडीम 
right ventricular infarction so ei patient gulo ke ki hoy amra koro these conditions have other clinical and echocardiogram features that differentiate tale other feature gulo mitral inflow velocity ta tokhon khub kajo dibe na bare tricuspid inflow velocity tokhon khub kajo dibe na tokhon amader chinta korte hobe other features gulo amader dekhte hobe jemon ei eigulo ke bolche je constrictive pericardium is mimickers copd rv infarction eigulo hocche constrictive pericardium is mimickers tale eigulo ki hoy amra korbo फिलिंग बंद हो जाए टाइम खुब इंटरग्रेशन समय पावे मेजरमेंटिंग Or requires further characterization. Tell us, we will do cardiac catheterization. What is it? We will do it. We will do it. Prominent or distant power. What is it? Some kind of nerve characteristics. I mean, pressure. What are we talking about? Square root sine constricted pericardium. What is it? What is it? We will do it. 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 बुजते रेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशारेशार
রাইট ভেন্টিকুলার ডায়াস্টলিক প্রেসার কাছে কাছে 19 মানে এগুলো বলছে সেম মানে ফোর সর্বোচ্চ 4 মিলিমিটার বা 5 মিলিমিটার ভেরি করতে পারে মানে সেম তাহলে দেখো আর এ প্রেসার পাবো 21 আর বি প্রেসার মিন আর বি ডায়াস্টলিক প্রেসার 21 পালমোনারি আর্টারি মিন প্রেসার 18 उन्नीस देखो फिलिंग তারপর আবার যখন অ্যাকচুয়াল প্রেসার বাড়ে তখন ভিও এ হয় আবার যখন অ্যাকচুয়াল প্রেসার কমে যায় তখন ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট হয় তাহলে এই যে যে এক্স ডি তাহলে এখানে কি হবে এই যে দেখো এই যে এই যে এ ওএফ এটা হলো অ্যাকচুয়াল কন্ট্রাকশন অ্যাকচুয়াল রিল্যাক্সেশন ভিও এ তারপর আবার যখন এই সরি অ্যাকচুয়াল যখন অ্যাকচুয়াল কন্ট্রাকশন করে এ ও এফ प्रमिन चले गिंग তেল প্রমিনেন্ট ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট ইন রাইট অ্যাট্রিয়াল প্রেসার এই প্রমিনেন্ট ওয়াই ডিসেন্টটা কি প্রমিনেন্ট ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট হচ্ছে এই যে যে কথা আমি প্রথম বলেছিলাম যে র‍্যাপিড আর্লি র‍্যাপিড ফিলিং সেটাই হচ্ছে প্রমিনেন্ট ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট আই আর্লি র‍্যাপিড ফিলিং হলে যে নেগেটিভ ডিসেন্টটা হয় অ্যাট্রিয়ামে বা সেটাই হচ্ছে প্রমিনেন্ট ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট এটাকে বলছে প্রমিনেন্ট ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট এর সাথে কি হবে এই ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট উইথ এম শেপড কন্ট্রোল এই ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট মিলে একটা এম শেপড কন্ট্রোল তৈরি করবে এটা হচ্ছে প্যাথোগনোমিক ট্রেসিং ফিচারস এই যে এম শেপড কন্ট্রোলটা তৈরি হলো ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট সাথে আবার এ সাথে আবার এ ওয়েভ এক্স ডিসেন্ট আবার ভি ওয়েভ এই যে যে এটা তৈরি হলো প্রমিনেন্ট ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট নিয়ে এটা এম শেপড কন্ট্রোল তৈরি হলো এটা প্যাথোগনোমিক অফ রাইট অ্যাট্রিয়াল প্রেসার ট্রেসিং অফ কনস্ট্রিকটিভ পেরিকারাইটিস এবার আসো রাইট অ্যাট্রিয়াম প্রেসার ট্রেসিং শোইং ফল ফল ইন রাইট অ্যাট্রিয়াল প্রেসার ডিউরিং এক্সপিরেশন এন্ড রাইজিং ডিউরিং এক্সপিরেশন রিভিলিং प्रेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारेसारे
बटे नट मैंडेटरी डायगनोस्टिकारी In equivocal cases, where non-invasive evaluation is inconclusive or discordant with clinical findings, 
Food anemic assessment by cardiac catheterization should be performed. In catheterization, we can see the pressure in the different waves, and we can, we can see the uh, X descent, we can see the M pattern, we can see the plateau and um, deep and plateau phase, that is a square root sign, and also we can see the M pattern and ventricular uh, discordant of the ventricular uh, pressure testing. So this is all about my presentation. Thank you very much. Stay safe and stay alert. So Maru, our uh, Monaji to borrow here, hello. Jai Ho. Sir, thank you, sir. Monaji, to our kids, sir, borrow no chest to us. Very nice, sir. Excellent lecture, sir. Sir, the request, sir, sir. Did the cost to go to to a topic to this, sir, milk or a parhaji jan sir. Let me show you to go back to the important topic, important. sir. Acha acha, let me give you, inshallah, let me give you. Acha, do you have any question? Thank you. Let me tell you. Do you have question? Thank you. Sir, after that, then, sir, I'm going to pull out the question. Okay, okay. So, thank you very much. To my to Osho, my do pure rest time. I show my turn. Ilam. To my this is the my mood. Our di. Dekhano chesta kuri. To my to parashno gulla. I have to clear hobe. To be. I am chesta kuri. Sir, simple hobe. Dekhar jono. Thank you very much. Thank you for your passion sharing. Stay safe. Stay alert. Let me leave. Sir, 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 मास्टर एक दो दिन जिन्हें सिटी क्लिनिकल क्लास चलनी था सर क्योंकि हमारे जो क्लिनिकल क्लास होते हैं ना यहाँ अच्छा जो तेरे प्लान करी ने मैं नेक्स्ट मंथ आज की तो शेष मंथ आगे मशहूर शुरू पोतम शब्द है दिखे बा आगे मशहूर पोतम दिखे किस्म में दिस सर आपने जब हम शुरू किया हमारे क्या एक दिन आगे दान